That's like the worst. All right, so I'm not muted. <laughs> <laughs> We're having some fun. All right. Okay, back to the fruits and veggies. So a couple of things with fruits and veggies to pay attention on a cleanse is um, the nightshades, which are tomato, potato, eggplant, and all peppers should be used suspiciously by some, especially if you have joint pain, uh, any arthritic condition. I've seen over and over again, taking nightshades out of uh, arthritic lives and they generally get better. Um, so it's worth looking at as an elimination, leaving them out and then adding them in. Um, God, I could go with so many stories. One quick story, I had a client that she had this kind of deformed thumb, that was my massage practice. And I told her, I go, hey, do you eat uh, tomatoes by any chance? And she goes, yeah, every day, why do you ask? I'm like, even in the winter? And she's like, yeah. And I go, you shouldn't be eating tomatoes out of season, honey, because they have a weird acid in them because they're, they're picked unripe or they're force ripe somewhere in, you know, in the off season. I go, just leave them out for a week, not forever. Just give them out for a week and let me know what happens. She goes back for a massage the next week later and she was out of pain. And she was like, uh, is it really that easy? I go, it's not going to be easy for you, honey. You've been eating them every day for years. Um, you just wait and see. And so she comes back a week later and she started eating them again. She, she caved. And I'm like, see, I told you, right? And she goes, God, you were right. And I go, you're going to have to come to terms with you want the pain or you want the tomato, you know? So she came back another week later and she'd been off and she was out of pain again. Laugh out loud. So um, that's a one example of hundreds I've seen over the years where leave nightshades out. Generally. I do better without nightshades myself. I get angry and irritable and my joints don't feel as good on nightshades. Um, and you don't want Craig Lane angry and irritable. It's not a good sight. Roommates saw it today. Um, and then the other thing is food combining. So generally three fruits maximum in a fruit salad. And um, I might go through it later, but if not, I'll do a little post on food combining. Um, you generally want to avoid melons with anything. So don't have a fruit salad with melons and other stuff. It's bad, bad stuff. Melons eat alone, no other food for an hour afterwards. Don't do it. It's not worth it, um, especially if it's sensitive digestion. The other ones are you have acid, subacid, and sweet fruits. So you don't want to combine too many of those. And there's charts. We'll talk about that later on another talk. And then veggies sometimes can be combined with fruit. And um, these are the really strict dogmatic people I'm talking about here. Generally, I re I'm pretty relaxed about food combining unless I see digestive symptoms. And then people have to start looking at it. The other one is food combining is not to combine starch with protein at the same meal. Um, if you have gas, if you don't have gas, don't worry about it as much. And I'll play devil's advocate. Half of people that have digestive, have digestive problems don't have symptoms. That's right. Half people that have digestive symptoms problems don't have symptoms. So if you're one of those people that think you're hot shit and you got tons of, you got tons of other problems that are unrelated to the digestive system, you might want to look at your digestive system. Um, okay, next, grains and beans. Here's the big debate. I've been doing cleansing since the 90s. So I was a vegan in the 90s, and so grains and beans were the cleansing feature and lots of veggies and stay away from meat. But in my world, beans are not protein foods. You people need to understand. Beans have twice as many carbohydrates as protein, gram per gram. All beans. I looked every one up. So you're not eating beans for a protein food. You're eating beans for a mixed food that's high in starch. So don't kid yourself. If you're eating beans, you're getting a lot of starch. Any bean, any bean you choose. So on cleansing, then, since Americans are generally carbohydrate excess, my cleanses tell people get off carbohydrates and stay on protein because protein's essential. Carbohydrates are not. We have essential fatty acids and essential amino acids. Have you ever heard the word essential carbohydrate? No, you haven't, and you never will. Not essential for life. Protein and fat is. So if you're cleansing and you've been eating a lot of carbohydrates, then do the opposite and have no carbohydrates. If you're eating a lot of protein and meat and big 16-ounce steaks, then don't do that. You know, do the opposite of what you've been doing. There's a whole appendix to this cleanse. Appendix D is called cleansing by the power of opposites. So if you normally eat a lot at night, eat a lot in the morning. If you normally eat a lot in the morning, eat a lot at night. Shift it around. See what happens. Lots of fun. Uh, meat and fish, the same thing. If you're, if you're one metabolic type on a teeter-totter, you're a carbohydrate type, then meat and fish will not help your cleansing. If you're on the protein type and you're doing, as I mentioned earlier, raw meat and raw fish, and you're preparing them properly and you've got a decent digestive system, then you will still be able to cleanse. But normally, if you have a steak this big, you might have a steak, you know, like that big, an eighth of as much. And there are ways to track this with the chronometer app on the phone and the program. 
And if you're not getting 70% of your body weight in grams of protein, you're at risk for low protein. And I watch this in lab work. People that don't get enough protein in their diet have lower serum protein in their lab work. Always over and over and over again. And you hear Craig going, rah, rah, rah. 10 years on one lady, lower your carbohydrates, raise your protein. She never did it. Now she has high blood pressure and diabetes. We just talked this morning. You know, it's like 10 years. How much do you have to suffer, honey? You know, that's what it boils down to, pain and suffering for most of us. I didn't change until I was in enough pain and suffering. So don't, don't make that happen. You know, don't be like me. Uh, most foods in a package should be obvious. Don't do those on a cleanse, especially those stupid protein bars. Please don't do those on a cleanse. They're not cleansing. Um, another debate about nuts. So I do seeds on a cleanse. I don't do nuts. Why? Because I have seen a very high correlation of nut consumption and gallbladder liver problems. So that's why. So generally nuts slow down cleansing and generally nuts aren't fresh enough. You want your, God, this pun, you want your nuts fresh. Well, I thought that. Um, so I got a dirty mind. Um, so moving right along, you want, if you can get some fresh almond butter or you want to do fresh uh, almond milk, not the pasteurized junk in the stores, then that's cleanse worthy because you're not doing any of the, the nut fiber. And so I do, uh, let's see, basic food chart. Let's jump there real quick. What do I say about nuts? Well, I say limit. And then, oh yeah, there's almonds. I did put almonds on there. All righty. I won't contradict myself. Uh, no packaged milks. Don't kid yourself. I had a teacher years ago that we were doing um, in the 90s at my macrobiotic center. We're doing the, the Lundberg rice milk and the soy milk and the oat milk. And you know, we thought we were all hot doo-doo. And then um, I went to the, the master guy. And I'm like, hey, what do you think of these? He goes, Pasteurized milk's better than that. And I just wanted to die, you know? I was like, oh, happy. I thought my nut milk was so healthy. And he's like, they're no better. It's no better because it's cooked. And when you cook protein, um, oh, there's so many digressions. When you cook protein, then I go back 100 years to what the old food therapist used to call arthritis cooked food disease. Why would they call arthritis cooked food disease? Is there a connection? Yes, because a third of your connective tissue is made of protein. Calcium and minerals, way too much credit. Your protein you eat determines whether you have bad joint problems. And so if you have cooked protein, that's damaged protein. Watch the egg white that's clear turn white. That's damaging of the egg white protein, folks. That beautiful grill mark on your steak, that's damaged protein. And so if you're re putting replacement parts in your body that are damaged, doesn't it make sense that the replacement parts are gonna be faulty? Hello? So nut milks that are pasteurized um, are not gonna give you a higher state of health. Raw nut milks will. An easy one is to throw some, hemp, some whole hemp seeds in the blender with some water, a few dates, and a little bit of uh, olive oil, I mean, excuse me, coconut oil. And you don't even have to strain that one. It just, the hemp seeds blend right up. It's a delicious nut milk, seed milk, excuse me. And then there's Appendix D, so you eat the opposite of how you normally eat. That's quite a fun uh, project to do. Cleansing by the power of opposites. Moving right along, okay. Okay, Gene, we were talking about this. How far do I go with cleansing? So this little <laughs> chart here. So the basic food chart is the easiest path to take, which is right here. This is all in that folder. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go wide for a bit, then go back to this chart. Like I started on the 1st with this chart, August 1st. And so I won't, I won't deviate from this chart all month. Oh, excuse me. I did have a tablespoon of coffee this morning in my Ticino. So see, it's going to kick me off again. Hopefully not. Um, so the basic food chart. And then if you want to do a, something a little harder, then you go to the weekly challenges or the weekly focus. So starting tomorrow, which is day one, the focus foods are high potassium ones. And there's a little list there. Can you zoom in? Yes, we can. That's even better. And the week one goal, so you talk about is there a plan, is to accelerate detoxification, loosen stuck matter in the intestines, Moisten and improve digestion and absorption. Think you have a messy apartment complex. You've got to get the old tenants out. You got all these bad guys in there. They're eating up all the rot in your body. That's right. You're rotting from the inside out. Don't blame the candida. That's its job. Fungus's job in nature is to eat rot. So don't blame the bug for the fact that you're eating too much food. For God's sakes. I had a teacher that was really big on self-responsibility, and I am too. 
Um, don't blame the bugs for your rot. It's like a pheromone you're giving off. Here, rot, come eat me. So first week's about getting all that out. Week two, this is out the phase of every cleanse, whether it's three days or three months. So there's lots of parameters for the first week there, folks. You can check it out later in detail. Week two, you're gonna clear those bad guys out and allow for quick passage of food with minimal digestive energy. So week two generally is about liquid food and giving your digestive system a rest. It could be fasting. So there's lots of ideas for liquid foods. You can do carrot, pureed carrot soups, teas, smoothies, juices, broths. Juice with yogurt. Eh, I better talk about that. Juice with yogurt would be, you know, someone who's underweight again, remember folks. Um, dairy and fruit will, will definitely slow down weight loss if you're trying to lose weight on the cleanse. And those veggies you see here on week two, they're kind of best juiced or um, chewed a lot. So if there's one thing that you do when you're cleansing, make sure you're chewing each bite 30 to 50 times. That's right. You got to count for a while. Until that food's annihilated in your mouth, you're not chewing properly. 30 to 50 chews. This was a macrobiotic thing when the cancer therapy in the 90s, I saw astounding results with cancer therapy people that were told they have to chew each bite 300 times. Can you imagine? So what that did though, was it made people eat less because you know, in a half hour, that's not much eating. That's a lot of chewing folks. 300 chews is about three to five minutes of chewing for each bite. Yeah, I got my six bites of dinner in tonight. <laughs> The consequences wow. better assimilation. Yes. Um, and I will, I'll add to that. I read a, I was read a book. I have an English minor for my first bachelor's degree was business and I had an English minor and we read this story of this guy in the concentration camp in Germany. And um, all they got every day was a bowl of cabbage soup and a piece of sourdough bread. And um, everyone around this guy died, but he lived because that meal, he chewed every bite into oblivion. Everyone else was scarfing it down. And he lived because he chewed. I'm not kidding. That's a true story. Crazy stuff. And then the last week, get the garbage out, rebuild the flora in the body, and calm and regulate immunity. Cleansing can kind of cause a little hyperimmune problems if you're, especially if you're taking a lot of immune herbs. So if you think of it like this, you've got this rotten apartment complex. So first of all, what attracts bad bad bugs or bad people into your body is a bad apartment complex so you want to remodel the apartments which is your gut lining so we go back to the first slide so if you have a lot of junk in here see like a lot of slime and mucus coming over these folds here then you're not going to be healthy oh my god there's a little slide i can show about this later so it's all about what's in here cleanses, master facility. Oh, we were back on the uh, weekly chart, thanks. So you wanna get that apartment changed and kick the guys out, then you wanna rebuild the apartments and attract healthy tenants in your apartment complex, right? So in three weeks, you're not gonna get it done. Don't kid yourself, but it's a good practice to be in of start your seasonal cleansing like I do, because you would, might ask yourself, why should I cleanse every three months? Because you aren't keeping up with the toxins in the environment. You aren't. I talked about it last. Uh, if you want to go to last week's talk, I spent type, time talking about the five toxicities, the five toxins in our lives. They're not going anywhere. And the three that are at an all-time high, radiation damaged tissue, heavy metal waste, and chemical waste, cannot be denied. It's the highest it ever have seen in history. So you got a guy that's behind a counter taking a number, and he's got too many people with numbers. And when you have too many people with the numbers you know, for your liver, you get symptoms. So each toxin is sort of like a, a customer that needs to be dealt with. So that's the week by week focus. Okay. And then the challenges, if you want to go even harder, you can go to the challenges. Let me go ahead that one up. Okay. So there's some weekly challenges, and I didn't put that one up, but there's three levels of them. And um, so you go to this folder from the links that you're provided, you all have them. And then, so there's three levels of challenges here. So let's pull up level one. So there's 21 days of the cleanse. So there's 21. If you wanted to do a challenge every day, there's all your daily challenges. 
Level one is relatively easy. Watch videos. Oh, and please state your intentions. You know, if you're gonna do a cleanse, why don't you, you know, what's your guiding light when the tough days come on day nine, 10, 11, 12 or something? And um, that's why I have an intention. And I've already stated it via email, but my intention is to change at least one person's lives by my own example on this cleanse. So if one person is life is changed for the better in the tiniest of way, then this cleanse is success for me. Um, I try not to be a hypocrite. I try to be a good example of what I'm preaching. So generally I do a pretty good job, but not always. Uh, laugh out loud. So you see level one stuff, pretty easy foot baths, chia seeds, carrots, grated radish salads. Um, then level two challenges, it's a little bit more like, and I'll be announcing ahead of time what I'm going to be doing. And then if somebody wants to join, you know, for the support, I'm going to be doing a three day water fast at some point this month. You see, level two is a little harder. Uh oh, I got to skip dinner. A whole week? What? Multiple days of liquid diet only? Oh, no. Rest practice. Try a one day fast. Rest as much as possible. The goal is not to move much. What? You're kidding me. Want me to sit still for a whole day? <laughs> Going deep day. Be in silence as much as possible. Try out suggested breathing practices and self care. Be in silence all day. You mean I can't talk? Now, we all know some people that need that day, right? <laughs> a talking fast. Boy, what a, what a concept. Well, I can just use this and go right over level three, huh? Oh, how nice. Look at this. Thank you, Google Drive. Such a dork. Here we go. Okay, the level three challenges, they are uh, not for everybody. So there's an intermittent fasting, you know, eating eight hours a day. A lot of people do that already. You know, they start eating at nine and stop at five. Um, liquid diet only again, but then this is where the fasting comes in. And so if you wanna do a fast, then that's generally considered that, oh, that's level two still. Sorry, folks. Well, maybe that wasn't working out so well. Let's go to level three. Okay. There we go, level three. And there's some really interesting ones in level three, like a mono diet, like eat only apples all day one day, or only carrots all day, or I've done a raw milk fast for two or three days. It's quite fascinating. Um, they used to do that for arthritis back 100 years ago. They just feed you raw milk for a month and your problems would go away. Astounding. Uh, I don't recommend it now for most people. But, um, maybe raw goat milk. Um, you could do bone broth all day one day, kefir all day one day. Um, you could do a clay psyllium shake made by, popular by Arise and Shine, Richard Anderson. We used to do a lot of those in my practice. Um, and then the fast and uh, what's any other interesting? Oh, eating all raw. That's another interesting one. And um, raw vegan all day, excuse me, because uh, raw meat is included in my cleansing if you're doing a little bit of it. And see, there's the fasting. That's level three. All right. Okay, we're done with the cleansing chart now. We're going to move along to ways to use our cleanse. Again, these are all in that document in the folder. Ways to use our cleanse. Um, easiest is just follow the basic food chart. You could add in some of the level one challenges. And you wanna go a little further, you can add in the weekly special foods. And so there's a little script here. If you wanna go deeper and deeper, it shows you some things you can add in. Even stuff that's not involving eating like enemas, colonics, raw food only. So it's all the chart there provided for you. So you can go deeper. And of course, I'm, I'm gonna be around for support. Um, there's a little journal provided in here if you want to journal the days what you were doing elimination notes observations of thoughts and moods very helpful to journal i can't recommend it enough because lots of stuff's going to get stirred up in your emotional cleansing physical cleansing leads to emotional cleansing okay, what's on the next one okay, we'll come back to that i'm going to re read what i have here and i'm um, just add some stories in so People ask me, what is cleansing and how does it relate to immunity? Because that's part of the connection here. So if you simplify cleansing in my four foundation system, there's four foundations to our body. And the fourth foundation is your drainage channels. Do you poop? Do you pee? Do you breathe? Do you sweat? And do you have secretions out your nose and your, you know, your secretion areas? That's the drainage uh, fourth foundation. So if, you, if you're all bottled up, like think about um, if, the, if the log is falling down, the river end up clogging the river up, then the water backs up, up into the mountains, right? 
Same thing happens in the human body. We talk about upstream and downstream in the human body. So if you have an upstream problem, i.e. you're not chewing enough, then the, the organs down below it have to work harder. And so, and if you have uh, pores in your skin that don't sweat well, then you're not detoxing out your skin well. If you don't breathe enough and you're always going, <laughs> which usually corresponds to a mind that does the same thing, slow or fast rapid breathing equals rapid thoughts. Slow breathing equals slower mind. So if we're not draining waste out of our body, then our immune system is going to suffer. And, and there's, there's a common sense thing with this. Think about if you've got a cop, he's running around like an immune cell, and there's a fog bank around him, he's trying to catch a criminal. Is he going to be able to find the criminal very well in the fog bank? No, he's not. So if, the, if it's a clear, sunny day, the cop go <laughs> get rid of the bad guy, right? Same thing with our immune cells. If you've got a bunch of waste clogging the stream in your lymph and your blood, then your white blood cells can't get at them as easy. The bad guys. So anybody can understand that, I think. You know, like if you got a bunch of traffic on the freeway and the cop's trying to get the bad guy, all the traffic's slowing down the cop getting the bad guy, right? If there's no traffic on the freeway, the cop gets the bad guy really easy. Same thing in the human body. So when we cleanse, we decongest, we detoxify, and we drain, ideally. So the best thing you can do, like ways we can cleanse are many. And can I do it with just food? Yes. You have to work harder if you're not going to take supplements and herbs. But you can do enemas and you can do raw foods and you can do bitter greens. Like in a salad tonight, we had, I had escarole and raw cabbage and romaine lettuce. And I was going to get some dandelion greens from outside. And you do your bitter vegetables and you get your bowels moving more. And that's a good way to start the detox process for many beginners, actually. As a matter of fact, I have clients, I have a, two clients recently that have skin problems, and their, quote, stated amount of bowel movements their entire life is barely two a week. And the doctors didn't have a problem with that. And that's called auto-intoxication, folks. You need bowel transit time from mouth to anus is 24 hours. So those people have thousands of bowel movements backed up and the portal veins that nobody talks about. Remember, you're eating food, it goes down here, and then there's these veins that take all the food up to the backside of the liver. Except the fat you eat goes up into the lymph and then dumped out up here by the heart. But for most purposes, most of the fluid goes up here to the liver via these portal veins. And so if um, the portal veins get a little clogged up, then the belly goes out. You see those men with the bellies. That's not a fat problem. That's the circulation to the liver is clogged with debris and waste and mucus and fat. So um, you want to get that person's bowels moving first and foremost. And I've cured so many skin conditions just with that alone. Get your freaking bowels moving every day. So if you have three meals a day, you should have three bowel movements the next day. And there's no negotiating that. I'm the guy that saw it. I was one bowel movement in the morning as a young man most of my life, got into the colon therapy enemas the last 20 years. And now when I'm on my point, bowel movement after every meal. That's, that's kind of ideal. Stomach fills up, it pushes on the bowel, which is right there next to the stomach, causes pressure, and you want to evacuate after you eat. That's the way it works. So good thing to do is to get your bowels moving in any, by any means necessary, and that will start your cleansing process. Intermittent fasting has been, has been really shown the last five to 10 years. I wasn't a big intermittent faster. My intermittent fasting started 25 years ago, which was the best time to eat is 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. As you see right there, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the best intermittent eating time. Why? Because you have the whole day to work off all those calories. I have guys that, it just drives me nuts. They don't eat until 2 p.m. and they eat up until 8 and then they got all this food rotting in their gut all night. Not smart. So my, my challenge to every single person out there that says they're not hungry in the morning is stop eating every day at 2 or 3 p.m. and you will be hungry in the morning. It's a, it's a vicious cycle to get in, and I see too many people in it. They continue to eat late, and they're not hungry in the morning, but your digestive system, without debate in my world, is most active 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. It really is unfortunate. So if you're going to do intermittent fasting, try to do it early in the day. Liquid diet is another easy way to cleanse. Um, there's a whole separate lecture about elimination diets. There's a real cool science to that. and. Um, Oh, you get out of here. And um, the best thing to do, though, to, an easy way to eliminate is just to say, I got this problem food. Every time I eat it, I seem to feel tired. Maybe I'll leave it out for a month. 
So leave it out for three to four weeks and then add it back and eat it alone and then see how you feel. Um, and there's a few foods suggested there that are good mono diets if you wanted to go on a full on elimination, which eliminate everything. And um, I found carrots or grapes or raw milk or brown rice fast or bone broth fast or chia seed fast or generally um, fairly functional fast as a solo meal for you know, a couple of days. Um, then there's a various diet programs. I'm not going to go into each one, but the GAPS program is really uh, championed by a physician, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. She was curing, was curing and is curing kids with autism. Um, I was part of that. I studied her work for a lot of years. There's the FODMAP thing about undigestible carbohydrates. There's food allergy diets. There's SIBO diets, histamine diets, mono diets, raw milk diets, vegan diets, to go on and on and on. Um, but the theme here is just ways you can cleanse. So eating only raw foods, um, fasting, and that's done with that page. We went over this food chart, went over the weekly. Cleanse assessment, where are we at? Okay, we're about 45 minutes. Um, this is basically my, how I assess for cleansing is, you lay down and take your blood pressure, lying down for five minutes, and then you take it right upon standing. If your blood pressure doesn't rise upon standing, you have fatigue to the degree that it falls. Example, client yesterday came in 120 over 80 lying down, great, great blood pressure. She stands up, it drops to 100 over 80 with a pulse that rose 30 points with a heart palpitation. That's bad. Because if you're lying flat, your body says, okay, I can lower the pressure on the system because I'm pumping blood horizontally without the force of gravity to the brain, mainly the primary area. It's trying to get you know, the heart to brain axis is what we're talking about here. So you go horizontal and then the pressure drops. This is all championed by uh, Dr. Ragland back in the 70s. And of course, this work never went anywhere because it cost zero dollars. You know, everybody wants their fancy medical billing equipment, you know. So then you take it standing up. And so suddenly the body is pumping blood against gravity uphill. Does it make sense that want to raise the pressure in the system to get it uphill? Yes. Kind of basic engineering, you know, philosophy. So if it can't do that, then this, this naturopath in the 70s championed this. And he's like, this is an adrenal problem. So I've had clients that uh, over the last 12 years doing these tests, um, when it starts to drop 30 or more, generally we're in trouble. And I had a lady that was in, he was, he was in bed all summer. She was a, a school administrator that had three kids and she was exhausted. And we had to bring her food all summer, me and my staff, because she couldn't get out of bed. And every time she came by and did a blood pressure check, it would fall like 35 points when she stood up. She's the record holder of the lowest blood pressure drop I ever have. The physicians that know this test, if your blood pressure starts dropping 20 or more, they want you admitted into the hospital because you're at risk for having a heart problem. Um, then your body temperature tells us about how warm your cells are operating, and that's generally considered thyroid function. And then your pH of your saliva and your urine. These are good ways to check your assessment for cleansing. You can do your Chinese pulses, and you can also suck on about a quarter cup of lemon juice and then wait five minutes and then check your saliva pH after the lemon juice. And if it doesn't go extremely alkaline, you've got a problem with the cleanse because the lemon sort of imitates all the acids of your metabolism get stirred up while you're cleansing. And um, so the saliva is alkaline. That's, when we make saliva, it's an alkaline secretion to buffer and soothe acidity and irritation. So this is, uh, Dr. Um, this is Victor Richard Anderson from his Arise and Shine system. That's where I got some of this information. Fascinating stuff. We looked at that. We looked at that. Okay, we have another couple extra minutes just to throw this in the fire. We talk about phase one, two, three detoxification in the liver. And um, there are certain enzymes, and one of the reasons why we cleanse is we start to speed up this detoxification pathways. And greens, and especially cruciferous greens, are two of the best for this. And this is a standard process study. And then there's a certain amount of important amino acids. So here's the importance of getting enough protein, folks. I'm showing you right here that you have got to have amino acids to run your phase two detox. So don't be trying no fruit veggie fast for three weeks and think you're gonna be doing detox well, because you won't. Unless you're a big person with a lot of excess weight. Those skinny people, man, they got a real hard time cleansing for more than a few weeks without some good protein in their diet. Like I said, there was the nurse that had the 12 hard boiled eggs and she would take six to 10 of them to work with her, you know? And every time she got a 
her energy would drop, she would just ch chomp on the egg and her energy would go back up. Why? Because now she's got building materials and energy to work with and she's not running on water. Okay, folks, um, I think that covers almost everything. I'm gonna go to the questions now while we're still recording. Okay. What is the minimum amount of days for someone who lacks vitality to do a cleanse for the first time? Great question. I like the week long, the five to seven day where you come in and you do like two days transitioning in where you go to the, you might go to the basic food chart and do some of the first week stuff on the weekly chart. And you might have three days where you go a little more intensively, but I'm a big fan of what we call the SMART goal. You want a goal that's simple and specific, measurable, attainable and realistic and time bound. So um, you can set yourself a little SMART goal and it should be attainable and realistic, but yet challenging at the same time. So each of us has to determine what's a challenge for us. For me, at this point in my career and my life, the only thing less that's gonna be challenging for me is a fast and enemas. And even enemas aren't really challenging. It's like, oh, I've done 10,000 of them, no big deal. But the water fast is really for me um, sort of the frontier because I've gotten into three days and never really beyond that. And um, with support, you know, we might even have a group fast. I had sort of a wet dream to do a, um, a fast until the United States comes back to normal. I'm not eating food until we're back to normal. Well, I would have starved by now, so I wouldn't be on the planet. And I guess that, that kind of uh, protest wouldn't have worked so well. Self-defeating protest, yeah, you know, yeah. generally. So maybe we'll moderate it down to three to five, seven days or something, you know, and laugh out loud. Or we can call up old Donnie in the White House. Hey, Donnie, let's do a week fast, man. We'll have a good old time. That'd be, or call the Board of Supervisors here locally and call them up. Hey, let's do a fast, Carlos. Woo! <laughs> it's all about vitality. And so if we feel tired, then the goal is to do a sleep fast. I had a girlfriend that um, we, would, we would go for three days and just out to the mountains in a cabin and just sleep as much as possible for three days. It's, that's a good cleanse. It's a cleanse for your brain and your eyes and your ears, right? No sound mm -hmm. coming in, no sights coming in, no emotional COVID weirdos around you, you know? Um, <laughs> The best, the best kind of fast. <laughs> the, the COVID weirdo fast. Hey, hey, the CWF. The COVID weirdo fast. We're doing a CWF. That'll be our acronym at the beach. We need a CWF today. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the only question. Any other questions, you guys? Anybody? I, I, have, um, I, I have just a follow-up with that one. So could I join your all's cleanse on like week three? If I should only fast for like five, not fast, but cleanse for five to seven days, would it be okay to join on the week three and start? Or is that? What do you guys think? Should we let her in late? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it'd probably be better for me to start on the first week. I'm just going to be gone. You're out with Anna, right? You're out with Anna? We're going to both be gone. Yeah. So... It would be better for me to do the third week, but starting my first week. Yeah, what you might do is while you're out, print out the basic food chart, take it with you, and you know, just use that as a guidepost. And then you, it's sort of, there's lots of calorically rich foods on that food chart. And you can go, well, if I leave coffee and some of the other major stuff out, I can still get calories and find some fun stuff while I'm traveling. It's up to you, but why don't you, um, Contact me, and then I'll put it on my list that you're going to join on, um, see, today's the 7th, 6th? So you'd be joining about the 20th? Yeah. Oh, so you all are starting, like, today? I'm starting tomorrow. I'm going to turn the recorder off uh, because uh, it doesn't need to be on anymore. <laughs>